It is now six minutes after the hour. Summer heat and humidity makes outdoor workouts a challenge here in the low country. But staying in beach shape doesn't mean you have to risk your health. News 2's Colby Thielen joining us now with the steps you need to take to make sure you're safe with your exercise routine. Hey, good morning. Well, serious fitness fanatics won't let a little heat stop them from reaching their goals. But without equipping themselves properly, it may be more serious, even dangerous factors stopping them. We spoke with one group of dedicated runners here in the Low Country who tell us it's choosing the right time of day and preparing long before that workout ever happens. It's Saturday morning at Fleet Feet Sports in Mount Pleasant. You won't find sleeping in here. Instead, a group of weekend warriors hoping to get out ahead of the near 90 degree day. Not unheard of here in the Low Country. You have to get acclimated just like you would to the cold if you were used to running in the heat. So for Amy Minkle is one of the owners of Fleet Feet. She easy. says equipping yourself for success is the key to keeping up. Not just what goes on your body, but what goes in it, replenishing water and electrolytes. It's really hard to kind of gain ground back once you've started to get into a dehydrated state. So trying to be proactive and be hydrated every day um, is a good way to, to prevent dehydration. And it's recommended that water always be available for those longer workouts. If you're going to be outside for 45 minutes or more, you should have a bottle of water on you, something like this. But for all those distance runners, you may want to consider a belt or even a backpack, which can carry up to 70 ounces of water. It's also about knowing when it's time to stop. Really listen to your body and pay attention to feeling dizzy or lightheaded or headaches. If you start to feel a chill when you're running in the heat, you need to go ahead and stop, get inside, and get some water. There may also be signs well before you step out the door. The main one? Your urine. If you're clear to pale yellow, you're good to go. Anything darker than that, you probably want to make sure that you have increased your hydration level and maybe even postpone your run. That's sort of the first warning sign that things could go very wrong. Absolutely. But the biggest challenge may just be getting up and going. The best way to do that, well, that one's up to you. Yeah, good I luck. I should have got you guys a couple of those extra little you diagrams. I want that poster. <laughs> that poster. Stick it on your refrigerator. Yeah. Yeah. Show it's us good what to color know. It's good to know. Well, you guys are probably the same way. I walk to my car and I start sweating sometimes here in the middle of July. Mm -hmm. So they recommend, I mean, typical standards, 64 ounces of water. That's two of these a day. But if you're working out, especially outside when it's really hot. Hold that up so people can yeah, see. Yeah, this is about 32 ounces you can see here. So you can fill these up twice. It's going to be 64 ounces. That's the standard daily recommended amount of you water you should be drinking. You see people walking around with gallon jugs, though. You should, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I was reading uh, a little bit and, you know, some of the websites actually recommend you drink half of your body weight. So for me, that's like 87 ounces, which is a little bit wow. more than two of these things. Really? So if I'm running and that's just if you're resting, if you're running, you're exercising, you're working out hard, you might need somewhere close to a gallon. That's and, a lot. And she said if you feel a chill while you're running, you need to stop and right. Mm -hmm. If you feel like a cold chill, if it's a really hot day, that's not a good sign. Okay. Yeah. So you should get inside immediately. Good to know. Yeah. All right. Thank Absolutely. you, Colby.